morning, church family. This week, we've been talking about our battles. We've been talking about overcoming our battles, preparing for battles, being in the battles, and what it looks like to come through. But today, I want to kind of approach it from a different note. Maybe this week, you've been not liking the videos as much because you're in the middle of a storm. Or what we're going to talk about today, maybe the battle won. Or someone you love, the battle won. There's still grace in this. And I want to be very careful while we talk about this and sensitive because I don't know what you're going through watching this right now. But just know that even when our expectations are not met the way that we think they should be, God is still God. God is still good. He does not make mistakes. Oftentimes we have to learn how to trust God. What trusting God means is knowing what He says. We don't trust our expectations, but we trust what he says. He doesn't say we won't suffer. He doesn't say bad things won't happen. But what he does say is his grace will be enough. He will get us through exactly what we're talking about. Because what do we do when things don't go our way? What do we do when God doesn't deliver the way we think he should? What do we do when we play God? Do we get mad? Do we blame him? Do we curse him? Do we turn from him? Or do we fall on our knees and say, God, I don't understand. I'm not happy about this, but I'm trusting you. You are enough and you are perfect. If God does not deliver our expectations, he is still God. Our situation does not determine God's goodness. We'll never be able to understand the small details of the big picture. But we trust the creator in this. But at the end of the day, God will get the glory. If there's a situation in your life that you think should have went a different way, that you think went wrong, just remember, if there could be a situation or a world that God would get more glory, he would have done it from the start. We will not get those answers here on earth of why things happen. But we have to trust him that he has a reason, he has a purpose, and he has a plan. I think about this in the, in the biggest way sometimes. To kind of humble myself, I look at the big, big picture. Look at Jesus, the most innocent man who died a criminal's death. When he was in the garden beforehand, in Luke 22, verse 42, Jesus is praying and says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. How would your life start to look if you viewed your situations the way Jesus did? You come to God with your wants. You come to God with your desires. But at the end of the day, you say, God, not my will, but yours be done. There's a prayer. I think I've said this a thousand times, but I've also prayed it a thousand times. The way I end a lot of my prayers when I'm suffering, when I'm in a storm, I have a plea with God. I pray and I say, God, let your will be done and let me be completely satisfied in it. Church family, sometimes God says no. That is an answered prayer. Look at Paul. Paul pleads with God multiple times to remove the thorn from his side. But God says no. So instead of suffering and complaining, he suffers with joy. We have to learn that when God says no, he's going to be gracious enough to let us learn how to lead with a limp. Because we know that his grace is enough because that's all we have.